If the CPU needs data on load operation, it check registers first. If the needed data is already in a register, the CPU uses it directly. No memory access is required. If it's not there, it would proceed to level one caching. If the data is found, we are done. If not, go to the level 2 cache, check if data is there. If not, we proceed to level 3 cache, check there. Then, if not found, we check the main memory and the disk if needed. You've probably seen different diagrams showing caches in various ways. L1 inside. L2 outside, sometimes L3 is there, sometimes it's not. I'm Anna and in this video I'm gonna show you why cache diagrams are more inconsistent than the weather forecast. I found a performance and analysis guide for Core i7 and Xeon processors. Yay! They will help us visualize how caches and TLBs work inside these processors. Okay. These are multi-core processors where each socket has one to eight cores sharing the L3 cache. This guide shows a two socket platform with quad core sockets. Now let's go through the manual and break down the components of each core, including caches, TLBs, and all that fun stuff. Let's first draw our CPU and let's start with our first core. And our core would have registers. We can add them right here. Registers are small, ultra-fast memory storage units inside the processor. These registers are used to store data temporarily while executing instructions. What registers do you know? Program counter, address register, right? Now let's look at our menu again. What does it say? Each core has a 32 kilobytes data and instruction cache. Let's put our data cache right underneath our registers and we can connect them now. The data cache stores actual data that the CPU needs to process. Imagine a function accessing an array repeatedly when you are looping through an array. If array fits in a cache, you can reduce latency because you won't need to fetch it from RAM each time. Reducing latency means decreasing the time delay between requesting and receiving data or executing an operation. We can add our instruction cache right next to the data cache now. Instruction cache stores the instructions that the CPU fetches from memory. This helps speed up execution by keeping frequently used instructions close to the processor. For example, when you are going through a loop, you need to constantly increment a counter, so you would want to store this instruction in the cache for easy access. So both of these caches are L1. You probably already guessed that L1 stands for level 1. Level 1 is the first and fastest cache memory in a CPU, but it's also the smallest in size. We can connect our L1 instruction cache to instruction fetch. Instruction fetch refers to the process in which the CPU retrieves an instruction from memory to execute. It is the first step in the instruction cycle that CPU uses. Let's go back to our manual now. <laughs> it says that we have a 256 kilobyte unified mid-level cache. We can put it in here. Mid-level means it's a level two and it's a unified cache. A unified cache is a cache that stores both instructions and data in the same space, instead of having separate caches for each. Just don't confuse it with a shared cache. It's coming next. Do you see how we put it inside of the core? It's not outside, so it's not shared. Let's keep looking at our menu. And two level data TLB system of 64 and 512 entries. Caches like 
L1, L2, L3 are designed to store data based on physical addresses. That's why we need a translation look aside buffer, TLB. It's essential because it helps translate virtual address space into a physical addresses, which is the form that caches and main memory use. Where can we put our tilbies? Let's just take a quick peek to another page of our menu that gives us more details on the level 1 TLB. Okay, so look, it says the level 1 caches have TLBs of 64 and 128 entries respectively for the data and instruction caches. There's a shared 512 entry second level TLB. So let's add level 1 data TLB with 64 entries and level 1 instruction TLB with 128 entries. We can connect them to the memory management unit and memory management unit is a hardware component in the computer system, which is responsible for handling the page table and translating virtual addresses to physical addresses. I actually have a video on processes where I go over this mapping. Check it out. And if you're still watching, leave me a comment if you find my videos even a little bit helpful. Now that I'm done advertising myself, let's add our second level data TLB for 512 entries. And this one should be unified as well. Let's look at our manual again. What does it say? There is a single 32 entry large page TLB. Sounds like this one might be shared by all cores. We can add it right here. Let's keep reading. The cores and sockets share an inclusive last level cache. In the usual DP configuration, the shared inclusive last level cache is 8 MB and 16 weight associated. Let's add our last level cache right here. It's unified level 3 with 8 MB and 16 weight associated. Inclusive caching means that all the data stored in the last level caching and upper levels cache. So it's stored in L1, L2, and L3. So it's easy to maintain consistency across multiple cores when sharing data. An alternative to the inclusive cache is a non-inclusive cache. This means that the last level cache does not necessarily contain all the data that is present in the upper level caches. In this kind of cache, data is not necessarily replicated in the level 2 or level 1, which means a better space efficiency across the entire cache hierarchy. Let's see our menu. Do we have any other relative information on here? Here, the cache coherency protocol messages between the multiple sockets are exchanged over the Intel Quick Path Interconnect. The inclusive level 3 cache allowed this protocol to be extremely fast. We can add this interconnect to our diagram right here. So, for example, this is one core. Imagine we would have another core right here. So, it would share L3 cache and large TLB. So, what goes next in the memory hierarchy? Hmm? Main memory. To connect to our main memory, we need a memory controller. A memory controller is a hardware component responsible for managing the flow of data between the CPU and memory RAM. Let's stick our memory controller right here. We can connect our level 3 cache to the main memory and connect that to the disk now. One of its most important functions is to fetch data from RAM when the CPU requests it and write data back to RAM when needed. Without it, the CPU would have no way to access memory efficiently. However, before the CPU can access memory, it needs to find the right physical address. This is where the memory management unit MMU comes in. The MMU translates virtual addresses used by programs into physical addresses, actual location and RAM. Once the corrected physical address is determined, the memory controller handles data transfer to and from RAM. Check this out. 
Arminius says, one of the main virtues of the integrated memory controller is the separation of the cache coherency traffic and the memory access traffic. Look, there is a second advantage, which is that the memory control logic can run at processor frequencies and reduce the latency. Now we can connect our memory controller to the main memory and we can stick our page table in there because this is where it lives. The lowest level in the memory hierarchy is the disk. So now get ready. This is what you have been waiting for. I'm going to show you how CPU is fetching an instruction. If CPU needs to fetch an instruction, instruction fetch unit generates virtual address. Unless L1 cache uses virtual address mapping, we would need to translate that virtual address to physical address. For that, we can check level 1 TLB to see if the virtual address has already been translated to a physical address. So if it's a hit, then we go directly to level 1 cache with translated physical address. But if it's a miss, we proceed to level 2 TLB. We'll check level 2 TLB. If it's a hit, the level 2 TLB will provide the translation for the virtual address and we'll use the physical address to go to level 1 cache. If it's a miss, proceed to level 3 TLB. Now we can check level 3 TLB. If it's a hit, the level 3 TLB will provide the physical address and we can then go to level 1 cache to fetch the data. If it's a miss, now we need to use the MMU that walks the page table in memory. If MMU fails to find the virtual address in the page table and realizes the data is not in RAM, it triggers a page fold. If page fold occurs, the memory controller must fetch the missing page from the disk into RAM before the CPU can access it. But if the page table contains a valid mapping, Oh, we now finally have a physical address and we can move on to the next step. Now we're ready to check our caches. Let's check level 1 cache first. So we look in level 1 cache to fetch the instruction at the physical address. If it's a hit, we are done. If it's a miss, proceed to level 2 cache. If the instruction is found, fetch it. Otherwise, check level 3 cache. Fetch it. If it's there, otherwise we need to go to main memory. So if all caches miss, memory controller fetches the instruction from RAM and store it in cache. If the data isn't in RAM due to page fold, the memory controller also loads it from the disk. Now that we have our diagram put together, let's look at the big picture and think, why do we need all these levels of memory? Remember the main memory hierarchy I was talking about in the beginning? Let's draw a triangle to visualize it. We have registers at the top, caches on the second level of our triangle, then we have a main memory and finally the disk at the bottom. Now look at how tiny registers are, usually below one kilobyte in size, but accessing them takes under 0.5 nanoseconds, which is really, really fast. Level 1, level 2, and level 3 caches are usually below 16 megabytes, and accessing them takes under 25 nanoseconds, which is still pretty fast. Then we have main memory. As you can see in the diagram, it has a much larger size, up to 64 gigabytes, but accessing it takes around 80 to 250 nanoseconds. So you can imagine how slow it would be if we had to check main memory all the time without using a cache. Finally, at the lowest level of the memory hierarchy, we have disk storage. We have two types of disk storage, solid state drive, SSD, and it's usually under one terabyte and takes between 25,000 to 50,000 nanoseconds to access it. Then we have magnetic hard drive, HDDs, which can be even larger, up to 10 terabytes, but they take an awfully long time to access, maybe 5 milliseconds. 
If you want speed, you definitely don't want to fetch your data from a magnetic disk. I left a link to the manual in the description below. If you want to learn more about Cache, I have a video coming up with Linux commands that will help you understand your Cache and Cache performance better. While that's still in the works, check out my other videos and don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. <laughs> Do you like reading these manuals with me? Did they help you a little or are they making you more confused? And I signing off. Bye!